So you just graduated with a four-year computer science degree, or you're soon to graduate with one. Congratulations. However, unless you live under a rock, you're probably more concerned than you are excited to enter this unstable tech job market. We had record layoffs last year, more layoffs this year, everyone's worried about AI because it writes a lot of new code now, and you're a bit worried that your four years of hard work may have been for nothing but now a debt to pay. Did you just completely waste your money? Did you choose the wrong career? This is a question I've seen more frequently in my YouTube comments. So in this video, I'm not only going to argue that you did did not waste your money, but I'm going to give you, from my almost 10 years of experience being in the industry, some guidelines to help you find success and to rekindle that excitement in starting your career in tech. This doom and gloom that hovers over your head, this all is surface level thinking. These tactics that work for your parents in their day doesn't work now. Many things have changed and your way of thinking must change as well. You need to have a much bigger concept of the opportunity that lies ahead, and you need to lay off proof yourself in the process. So let me give you six tips, and these are going to fan out a bit from narrow to wide. But before we get started, I wanted to announce that my coding community is officially open again. I've moved it over to the school platform, and it currently costs the price of a Starbucks drink to join. And that will actually be going up in a week or two, so get in while the price is low. I'll put a link below in the description if you want more details. Okay, six tips. Number one, the starting point. Before we get to opportunity, we need to discuss humility. You see the big salaries, you see the big titles, you see all the people that don't have the degree that you have, and you are the one that put in the work. And you think the industry then owes you a job. Well, it doesn't. You are a newbie in the industry. You have little to no real world experience. So take this pride that you may have and swallow it for a while. This means to get your foot in the door, take what you can get from the outset. If they only offer you 50,000 at your first job, take it and work for a year. If it's a paid internship, take it and work extra hard to be amazing and they may just hire you on. The biggest issue I see with many new grads is they have outlandish expectations from the start. They've spent four years debating with other students, they have new clicky keyboards, 3D printing machines, and they think they know all the workings of the computer world. And they often are feisty and they want to correct everyone because their professors laid it out this way or that way. And everyone else just isn't thinking as technical as them. And often you might be right. But this isn't how you enter the industry. You enter the industry more with your ears open and your mouth closed. You do good work. You try and soak in everything your mid and senior level coworkers are doing. They have that real experience that you need to succeed. So be humble, don't expect six figures, take what you can get to get some experience and soak up the knowledge along the way. Number two, introduce yourself to the industry. This is one step in how you become what I call unlayoffable. You get on X and you post a couple posts per day, you reply to like 10 people a day, every day and then you cross post these on linkedin then you subscribe to a newsletter may i suggest the travis media newsletter link below so that you are fed the latest updates happening in this industry this gives you the ability to be in the discussions going on then start to form opinions and you do this not only by reading but by writing regularly just buy a 99 cent notebook. Writing helps you form thoughts and map together different facts, and you begin to form opinions that you can back up. Then you share them. Start writing on Substack or Medium, not in hopes that you'll get paid for it, but to get your name and your views out there. Again, take the content, break it down, and share it on X. Force people to see your profile picture multiple times a day. Here's what I mean by that. Here's some examples. Glitch bite. Check out this profile photo. It's very unique. And when I see it in my timeline, I always check it out. And if you just scroll through these, everybody's kind of common. Then I see this one with a yellow background. If I saw this every day, multiple times per day, it would stand out to me when I saw it again and I would end up following this person. Actually, I am following this person. And if I keep scrolling down, there's Danny Thompson. We'll talk about him in a minute. But I see Fireship. So Fireship, he's had this for a long time. It's orange on the background, it's a picture of him, and it stands out. And it's been the same, like I said, for a long time. And the key here is not so much what it looks like, but for it to appear on people's timelines regularly, day after day, as new tweets and as comments. So if you're posting multiple posts per day and you reply to like 10 people a day, and you pop up everywhere so that you start to stand out when people see it, and you don't change it for a long time, people start to follow you. People start to look for your opinions. And like I noted earlier, I've seen this picture for a 
a long time of Danny Thompson. And when I'm scrolling through my feed and I see it, I read his tweet because he's established himself as a person in this industry who has an opinion and who has good insight that he's learned over the years. Imitate Danny. Pop up everywhere so that you start to stand out when people see it. And then don't change it for a long time. And over time, become a person people look to for perspective in this field. Because when people do that, recruiters see it. And since people are seeing you daily, your network begins to grow. People begin to see that you know what you're talking about and they look for your perspective. Then, if you get laid off, you have this network of people that can virtually vouch for you and many more who would rally to scoop you up into their company if they could. The point here is to not be a nobody in tech. I have a whole video on that, link above. But you want to form opinions with skills to back them up. And since you are young, you have many years to do this. Many years to become more and more valuable and marketable in this industry. Number three. Build the Legos. Your degree helped you generalize. You learned data structures, algorithms, computer hardware, a little coding, math, science, and all that. But it's like a bunch of Legos poured out on the floor. It's not a model Batman car or Star Wars ship. It's a mess and they hurt to step on. These skills you've learned are not immediately valuable in the real world because when you start working with teams and in the cloud and writing scripts and debugging and trying to locate a memory leak and try to set up some Windows servers, it's a whole different ball game. Many people say their degree didn't prepare them at all for what they faced in their first tech job. However, you did learn the right things, the things non-traditional devs would have loved to have learned. But you need to learn to apply these concepts to real world problems, and this takes time. But what I'm getting at here is that you need to work to become a good generalist. One who can solve problems, who can fix critical errors when they arise, who can deploy Windows and Linux machines in the same day, who can write scripts to automate monotonous tasks, a technically dependable person. Businesses love good generalists, software engineers that can trust to solve any problem, software engineers that can take the technical and perform the practical with it. You have this knowledge, but you haven't developed it yet. And it takes time in the real world, but it should be sought after as fast as possible. And one way to do this in as little as 15 minutes a day is with today's sponsor, Brilliant. Quick word about them. Brilliant.org is a great way to learn math, logic, and computer science interactively. Brilliant's fun, it's practical, and it has thousands of lessons from computer science and programming, algorithms, Python, data, logic, and other tools that help you level up your skills. And it's built for busy people like me and you. Like I said, you can master big concepts in as little as 15 minutes a day, and it's a much better use of your time than mindless scrolling. Maybe you want to dive deeper into large language models, neural networks, big data, or just learning the basics of Python, building programs on day one with their built-in drag-and-drop editor. Today, I did a few lessons on real-world algebra, which teaches you to build and use formulas to tackle real-world situations with algebra. And math is always a good subject for us to review. Brilliant helps build your critical thinking skills through problem-solving, not memorizing. So while you're building real knowledge on specific topics, you also, in the process, become a better thinker overall. To try everything Brilliant has to offer for free for a full 30 days, visit brilliant.org slash travismedia or click on the link in the description. You'll also get 20% off an annual premium subscription. Now back to the video. All right, number four, glue the Legos. Now that you're a good generalist, you can take technology you're not familiar with and figure it out because it's all somewhat the same under the hood. Now's a good idea to add in, note that I'm adding, not replacing, a specialization. There's not a dichotomy between the two. It isn't an either or, it's an and. Be a great generalist with a particular specialization. Love JavaScript? Well, become the expert in the language in one library like React or framework like Next.js. Love C Sharp? Become a .NET expert. Love IoT or Internet of Things? Then become an expert in that field and with that tooling. Generalization will get you jobs all over the place. Being a specialist an expert, the go-to guy in a particular thing, puts the ball in your court throughout your career. Now, a lot of people say this gets boring working with the same specialty all the time. I get it, but you don't have to stay a specialist in the same thing forever. Specialize in something else while you're exercising your specialization at your job. And this leads me to the next point. Number five, your career is fluid. If you're 21 or 22, fresh out of college, you have like 30 to 40 years ahead of you. If you don't prefer your first job, it's okay. It's just your first year. And if in five years you're tired of programming and your passion is more in system administration or project management, then make the moves to shift into that space. And if in five more years you're sick of systems and love machine learning, 
then make the moves to shift into that space. The point here is that over time, your career should be a fluid career. Why? Because tech is a huge space. Many project managers that I've worked with have a background in programming. They're amazing in something they no longer do. They did it in the first decade of their career out of college. They weren't always what they are now. And you don't have to always be what you are now. In fact, to stay fulfilled and satisfied throughout a lifetime, it's good and healthy to shift into different roles. So every couple of years or so, do a self-assessment to see if you're where you want to be. Is what you do fulfilling? If not, make some plans to shift into a different area of tech that excites you more in that season. And then finally, and most importantly, number six, why the opportunity is so vast. Okay, you may be like, Hey Travis, you didn't really answer the premise you gave us at the beginning of the video. I'm fresh out of college and I'm worried about my career and if I made a mistake. What about this? Okay, let's talk about it. You are entering a tough market, but it's not because it's a bad industry. It's because we've had a bad economy for a few years now and we're digging ourselves out of the hole we've created. And this isn't new. It is not the first time this has happened by any means. It's cyclical. So first, you're not in a dying industry. Second, you are entering an AI boom. AI can write code. AI can be a companion to a senior dev such that they no longer need you. And AI may be the reason why jobs aren't coming back as fast as they are in tech. This is a reality. But let's take a step back overall and look at the landscape. Everything we do every day is tech. Everything that exists all around you is created by people with your skill set. The cars, the computers at gas pumps, the cloud, web apps, your phone, your bank, your hosting service, your low code app, your watch, everything. So you're now in a field where you have unlocked the skill set behind producing, maintaining, and creating everything and everything going forward. Now let's say AI can do the technical of 20% of this. You either see this as a threat or you see this as 20% of developers that can now innovate on brand new, cutting edge, never really thought of technology. And this new technology now demands people with your skill set to run it. That's actually AI creating more jobs and opportunities. If AI takes the job of a call center clerk or the bank teller or the cashier, that's one thing. These jobs are monotonous and no one really likes to do that work anyway. But out of all the things AI can replace, do you think it can easily replace the field of workers that it depends on to exist? And if for some reason it did, would those workers not then look to innovate into new frontiers now that all that is out the way? What I'm trying to tell you is that you are in the very industry of future innovation. Stop worrying about AI taking that legacy Java role that you hate so much anyway. Instead, think bigger into all the opportunity we have in tech today. None of this exists because of AI. It exists because of you and me. AI just showed up in the middle of the game like, hey, I'm ready to play. You see, you see yourself as a person who writes code. That's small. That's a small percentage of what you do. You are a problem solver, an innovator, a persuader, a conveyor of technical to simple. Tech isn't getting sucked up by AI. Tech is blowing up because of AI. And you are now in an industry with the skill set to come alongside of a field that is blowing up. That's exciting. I'd love to hear what you think below, so leave a comment. If you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, consider doing so. And I'll see you guys in the next video.